This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Babbel and by Factor. Time can feel like it's moving quickly or moving slowly, depending on what's happening. And believe it or not, it's only been about three weeks since Elon Musk showed up at Twitter HQ carrying a sink. Demanding to be let in. Let that sink in. Yeah. It feels like it was a lot longer ago because an insane amount of things have happened during those three weeks. So many things that we are not going to even bother recapping any of it. But suffice to say, Elon's reign at Twitter has been a, a bit chaotic, or, or to borrow a, a term from startup culture, it's been disruptive. <laughs> yes. He's been very disruptive. Mm-hmm. And these past few days have been especially chaotic. In fact, by the time this video is edited and uploaded, there is a non-zero chance that Twitter won't even be accessible. Just like a, a 404 not found error message. It's not a high chance. I don't know. It could be a high chance. It's not a zero chance. Yeah, it's... um. It was so fascinating that uh, just Thursday night on Twitter was, if it doesn't go down anytime soon, it already had its send-off party. Yeah. The wake has happened. That's good. We should all have our funerals while we're still alive. Uh, Didn't Mel Brooks do that or someone? Uh, Yeah, I can't remember. It might have been... It's an old comedian had their, like, living uh, thing. But yes, in, you know, celebrate it. Celebrate it while it's around, uh, because if it did go offline, man... You, you really would have wanted to be there. And everyone shared all their links and yeah. everything. It was a very... People poured their hearts out. I, I bet, a lot of, uh, bet a lot of people who've ha- had crushes for a long time, they, they finally let them know. A yeah. Lot of, a lot of people were holding in uh, death threats. Uh, if to, you got a crush on me, you got to tell me now. Yeah, if you got a crush on anyone or you've been meaning to send a death threat to any politicians, tonight's the night. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's your last chance. Yeah. But um, um, yeah, for now though, for now, last I checked... Twitter is still uh, it's still around. Okay. It's still around somehow. It's it's kind of amazing that it is, but um, well, I don't know. You know websites they just sort of run I guess literally these days. right before coming here to film, someone uploaded the entirety of Fast and the Furious to the website. Hell yeah! So uh, if any, it, it wouldn't be surprising if Universal uh, aimed the old low orbital ion cannon at Twitter and was like, no. But we have no idea. Yeah. So the reason why the future of Twitter is so uncertain right now, though, and the reason why so many people on Twitter Thursday night were treating it like an Irish wake is that on top of everything else that's happened so far, it appears as though Twitter is currently being run by a, I think a skeleton crew is even putting it a little too much, yeah. uh, considering the previous amount of employees right. and the amount of work. It but had a skeleton, already been cut in half. <laughs> yeah, but th- we're talking like down to just a few hundred employees. And... That I, I don't know if that sounds like a lot to you, but it is not at all. Yeah. Uh, and previously, Twitter had over 7,000 employees. but And that's just before Elon showed yeah, up. Yeah, Elon so, showed up, fired half of them, and uh, now the remaining, the previously remaining half has been uh, decimated. I did see the thing, you know, where you had to click the link, uh, and then obviously uh, a majority of people in solidarity with one yeah. another did not do that and no. said, I'll take the severance. But apparently, uh, from like an internal person was like, well, the option was that or the severance, and he was like, we have to work twice as hard, and there was no, like, you're going to get yeah. a pay raise. Yeah, the, uh, there's no carrot and a stick. It's just a stick. It's like, yeah, you know how, you, how much you've been making for however long, who knows how long? That's what you're going to do, but it's going to be a lot worse. But as a bonus, as a perk, you get to say that you work for Elon Musk, the world's smartest, richest, and most handsome man. And if we do the impossible... You will get the notoriety that you so deserve. Mm. Uh, Anyways, as we discussed in our previous video this week, Musk sent an email to Twitter employees on Wednesday saying that uh, moving forward, they would need to work long hours at high intensity and be, uh, his words, extremely hardcore. And if that's not something they wanted to be a part of, well, uh, you're fired. You're fired. Uh, Well, you get severance, so it's it's nice, I guess. But uh, either you click yes and you agree, or you walk away with three months severance pay. I mean, that's a tough decision. Yeah. What do I choose? You're going to pay me to look for a job for three months? Unsurprisingly. Yeah. Twitter employees who had seen their new boss publicly talk shit on them constantly for the past few weeks and seen their colleagues fired for daring to push back on Musk's statements when they were factually incorrect, decided that three months pay to never have to deal with this asshole ever again sounded like a great deal, actually. Uh, Unconfirmed reports started circulating among tech journalists on Twitter Wednesday afternoon that a majority of Twitter's remaining employees chose not to click yes and that Twitter's internal Slack was absolutely flooded with people announcing their farewells Mm. with a little salute emoji. Uh, This was further confirmed when hundreds of those employees publicly announced their resignations on Twitter. The sheer scale of this mass resignation, it's, it's 
it's just so huge. It's a seemingly endless stream of employees, many of whom had worked at Twitter for the better part of the last decade, some longer than a decade, all deciding that right now they had finally had enough of this shit. I mean, he bye bye. That's the thing is it's like an eject button and you get the severance pay and you have an added bonus of knowing that throughout the past three weeks, every time he's done a layoff, he has consistently begged people to come back. Yeah. So you can get you can double dip a little bit. Yeah, he's uh, apparently he, he sent an email on on Friday when we're filming this saying like, anyone who knows how to code, uh, come see me in my office. <laughs> also, can someone let me into the office, yeah. please? Um, yeah, here's The Verge with more on this. Twitter had roughly 2,900 remaining employees before the deadline Thursday, thanks to Musk unceremoniously laying off about half of the 7,500 person workforce when he took over and the resignations that followed. Uh, remaining and departing Twitter employees told The Verge, given the scale of the resignations this week, they expect the platform to start breaking soon. One said that they've watched legendary engineers and others they look up to leave one by one. Quote, it feels like all the people who made this place incredible are leaving, the Twitter staffer said. It will be extremely hard for Twitter to recover from here, no matter how hardcore the people who <laughs> remain try to be. <laughs> well, uh, it continues. Multiple critical teams inside Twitter have now either completely or near completely resigned, said other employees who requested anonymity to speak without Musk's permission. That includes Twitter's traffic and front end teams that route engineering requests to the correct back end services. Mm. The team that maintains Twitter's core system libraries that every engineer at the company uses is also gone. You cannot run Twitter without this team, a departing employee said. Several members of Twitter's command center team, a group of engineers that is on call 24-7 and acts as the clearinghouse for problems internally, also tweeted about their departures. If they go down, there is no one to call when shit breaks, said a person familiar with how the team operates. The team that manages Twitter API for developers has also been severely gutted. And I I've seen conversations and I I've even like, you know, chatted with friends online who are just like, under the assumption that somehow Twitter is too big to fail. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, and I said to them, watch the servers go down once. Right. Uh, and I, I mean, I can kind of see Elon's logic, like when things are running smoothly, when it's uneventful, it's like, yeah, we seems like we have way too many people working on this. But like when shit goes wrong, if there's another, uh, hack like that one where all the verified accounts started like yeah. chilling crypto, like he is fucked. There's definitely something brewing. I mean, it's yeah. a giant bullseye right now. It's a target. So yeah, the, the fear that Twitter might just suddenly stop working due to entire teams no longer working there, it was a justified fear. And while the app itself has managed to keep on running for now, Twitter is apparently also missing entire non-software departments, like their tax department, <laughs> their financial <laughs> reporting department, and even their payroll department. Well, you know, the checks, they pretty much write themselves these days. That's the problem, though, is like you take the severance option, it's like, well, now you've kind of just committed to a lawsuit eventually because you're going to have to sue to get that money. That yeah, you and anyone who uh, actually did click yes, it's like, cool, uh, I'm working 80 hours a week and uh, still haven't gotten that paycheck. Yeah. Um, have you hired... Uh, have you hired a payroll team yet? Mm. I mean, the situation is so dire that Elon suddenly decided to close all of Twitter's offices until Monday and revoke all badge access out of fear that any of the hundreds of people who just quit might try to sabotage the company on the way out. Which is a good, that's a- That is a uh, reasonable fear. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So, so far, the Twitter app continues to run as usual, somehow, as of when we're filming this. The real stress test will probably come on Sunday when the World Cup kicks off and soccer fans all around the world in literally every country all log on to live tweet Qatar versus Ecuador. Um, yeah. Also, the bandwidth... l luckily, this is a World Cup that has no other uh, problems, things <laughs> to talk about, uh, yeah. uh, anything else going on that would be newsworthy. Yeah, there, there's definitely no other sort of uh, threads of discourse around this World Cup unrelated to the uh, soccer matches themselves. <laughs> Elon, at some point in the next week, is going to beg people to stop talking about the workers who died building the stadium. Can we focus on the game, people? Come on! Guys, guys. They we're, they we're all here to watch, we're all here to watch the, the footy, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, Elon continues making new policy decisions which seem to undermine his original stated free speech goals. Uh, here's Friday's announcement. New Twitter policy is freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. Negative slash hate tweets will be max de-boosted and demonetized, so no ads or other revenue to Twitter. You won't find the tweet unless you specifically seek it out, which is no different from rest of internet. 
Wow. Hmm. He's really broke the mold this time. He invented shadow banning. I'll add that to the list of things Elon Musk has invented, like uh, cars, tunnels, space, uh, robots. If he and had done nothing, media. this would be the same policy, right? Um, Outside of the Twitter blue uh, boosting your tweets. But what's funny. Pretty about much, because, yeah, the, in, on Twitter already, like, if you tweet something that, like, blows up, and you scroll through the replies, like, at the bottom, there's a button that says, like, show more. Yeah. And it's always the stuff that's, like, High like bot rating in the detection software, or, or like, it's like so offensive, yeah. yeah, outrageously offensive. So this is literally that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the 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 one thing was his verified program, if working as intended, would elevate the tweets of a bunch of people that will get bullied yeah. because their tweets are getting put in front of other people that don't want to see their tweets on their timelines, right? And they have the button that's like. And by the way, I paid for this. Yeah. So and then, uh, anything these people post, you scroll through their tweets. There's always at least one person that replies with the two mannequins. Like, yeah, this motherfucker. This paid problem for is blue. going to solve itself because of a very effective brand of bullying that we've all been deploying. Shame. Yes. Shame. It works. So look, Elon, this this new this new policy. Yeah. It is just a. It's a pretty long winded way of just describing shadow banning. Something that Musk and his fellow right-wingers have complained about for years. And also, what the hell is a negative tweet? Guess we'll see. A picture of Elon Musk and Jelaine Maxwell. That is a very negative tweet. I guess a picture so. of young Elon Musk with a uh, noticeably higher hairline. That is negative. Posting the current Tesla stock price and charts. Negative. Negative, yeah. Can't post that. Can't post that. The only, only green lines, the only the lines that go up. You can show those. Uh huh. So yeah, this is uh, pretty open to interpretation. Yeah. Also, he announced that uh, Kathy Griffin, Jordan Peterson, and the Babylon Bee have had their account privileges reinstated. Comedy's legal again. Yeah. Uh, just a wonderful brand of comedy. I, I can't wait to see the uh, Kings of Comedy tour with those three acts. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he hasn't uh, decided on on Trump, but there is plenty of fun stuff ahead as he decides uh, at his own whim. Who's yeah. allowed back on? I do think it's funny, though, that someone asked him directly about letting Alex Jones back on, and he just put no. I mean, could, but again, like, this is, if you had asked him that, like, a year ago. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, sure. I, I believe uh, all debate should be settled in the marketplace of ideas. And now that he actually has his job, he's like, no, I can't fucking do that. Like, that would, that would, any remaining advertisers we have would say bye-bye the second Alex Jones and Donald Trump are back on the platform. Yeah. Also, the opening line of his tweet is lifted directly from the Sasha Baron Cohen speech on Facebook's overreach and uh, <laughs> a and how it like fucks with people's minds. Yeah, uh, it's from that speech that Sasha Baron Cohen gave. Oh, it's literally like freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he just in the back of his head had that kicking around somewhere, or literally was like, "This will be funny." Um, and certainly won't draw any unwanted attention to a video that is very critical of what I'm, exactly I'm doing. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, hard, I don't know. To, hard to say what's going on in this man's head, but... Uh, I would say not a lot. It's uh, It seems to be reactionary everything. Yeah. Well, so that's where we're at with Twitter. Uh, hopefully it's still there by the time this video goes I could up. give a shit. Fucking burn it down. If it was gone today, I would have been like, that's awesome, except for people that used it for promotion, which sucks. But I mean, this I, should be a real motivator to get on some other platform. I rely on it pretty heavily for this job. Like, anything happening in the news, I can find videos and like it was reactions so much faster on Twitter than like Google or any other like social platform. Twitter became the best video search engine yeah. on the internet. And it is a shame to see it go. And but like the, the bookmarks, uh like all, all the stories we cover, like I are stuff that I save in my Twitter bookmarks to like go back and read later. Uh that yeah, it's like gen it has genuinely uh when once I started thinking about it, once it became real, like, oh shit, this might actually shut down, I was like, ah oh, fuck, that would make my job a lot harder. Yeah. But uh I don't know. There's always Reddit, I guess. Who cares? Reddit, uh RSS feeders, it's all it's all there. And yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. But for you. Like, Don't worry. But I, I need my shit posts. There's really nowhere else where you can find a good shit post. Yeah, because it's open source comedy writing. It's great. Yeah. yeah, the best rises to the top. But anyway, moving on now to a slight update to a previous story that we covered. The Somerset Gimp, mm. a man in southwest England who for years has terrorized locals by prowling late at night in a full body latex gimp suit and sometimes rolling around in the dirt and getting all stinky, mm. lunging at people. Turns out, 
Gimp men are apparently a thing in England. Just part of living there. There's yeah, every town's got their gimp. Uh, yep. The other gimp men have they have some thoughts on this Somerset gimp and what he is doing to their reputation uh, in the gimp community. Yeah. Uh, here's the mirror with a report on the gimp man of Essex. A man who goes by the name the Gimp Man of Essex has blasted his Somerset counterpart for giving the whole Gimp community a bad <laughs> reputation. The Gimp Man of Essex is a micro celebrity in Colch Col Colster Colchester Col Colchester, where locals sometimes spot him doing his weekly shop in Tesco, clad head to toe in black latex. He even shared his outings and posts pictures of himself for stunned onlookers on social media, going by at Gimp Man of Essex, and he has been frequenting his village harmlessly for the past nine years. When out, he has to be as normal as possible, but other gimps haven't quite followed the same rules. The Gimp Man of Essex looks to use fetish for good, and often organizes charity fundraisers, currently linking to a Just Giving page on his TikTok where people can donate to Mind, a mental health charity. So yeah, I mean, despite looking not that much different than the Somerset Gimp, the Gimp Man of Essex couldn't be any more different. The Somerset Gimp only appears at night and seems purely motivated by the uh, psychosexual desire to strike fear into the hearts of his victims. Well, the Gimp Man of Essex does his gimping during the daylight hours and does not wish harm upon anyone. Get some errands done in the meantime. He's, he's just a dude in a full body BDSM outfit going about his life. And uh, his local community seems to mostly enjoy his strange presence or at least tolerate it. Yeah. Unfortunately, he looks a lot like another English gimp who's, who's not so nice, a naughty gimp. We got the, the nice gimp, the good gimp, and the bad gimp. And and he this this gimp of Essex, he wants everyone to know that uh, not all gimps are prowling perverts. That's true. Uh, the, the gimp man of Essex tells iNews, people might think of it as weird, but I'm not doing any harm. I'm not going out naked. I'm fully covered. No matter what other people's perception of those clothes are, just because someone's wearing latex clothing doesn't mean they're a monster. But then we have the Somerset gimp. When I first saw the Somerset gimp, I thought, this is 100% wrong. This guy has undone everything the gimp community <laughs> is trying to do. Gives us all a bad rep. Jumping out on women, however you're dressed, isn't right. There are innocent guys like me who go out on walks in their gimp suits. This guy is hiding around in the dark at night and scaring people lifeless. That's different. I wouldn't be surprised if alcohol or drugs were involved. They're asking for trouble terrorizing people like that late at night. Yeah, um, it's, it's not fair. Well, this is kind of like, it, it seems like between these two, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like cryptids, where yeah. depending on your region, you can see a lot of people see the same type of things, but they have uh, they noticeably di different characteristics. Yeah, I mean, yeah, some versions of Sas Sasquatch will tear you limb from limb, but some other versions of Sasquatch will like, uh, you know, take you in when you're sick and yeah. uh, nurse you back to health. And then Florida has the one that stinks. The, yeah, skunk ape. <laughs> yeah, that's his really his, his attribute is that he smells like shit. Yeah. Oh. So look, yeah. It depends on what part of England you're in, depending on what type of gimp you're going to get. Yeah. I, I got to wonder, like, I mean, England is a, is a place with like, ancient traditions uh, going back a very long time that have managed to carry over. Like, I mean, back in like the 1500s, did every town have some version of the gimp? Like a crier, there? yeah. Yeah, like the, the town crier, the town gimp. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe this is something like that. It's a balance that is needed. Because I've know? never heard of any, any town gimps here in America. Uh -uh. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, time to get started. Elliot, yeah. you know what to do. Whew, gotta suck it in. Get me the talcum powder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we've got the uh, headlines half of the show coming right up. But first, this episode is sponsored by Babbel. This holiday season, if you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, and culture, give the gift of Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you'll finally be able to discover the wonder that comes with learning a new language. What we love about Babbel is that they don't change their UI. I mean, uh, is that how natural and immersive <laughs> the lessons are? This isn't just learning boring grammar and vocab. You actually learn to have full conversations. It is a lot better than their competitors in the sense that you are ready to go have a conversation. Yeah. Instead of uh, I'd be being able to identify words is great, great for reading, but uh, it's a lot more natural with Babbel. Right. So if you or someone in your life has a trip planned for next year to somewhere that English isn't spoken, this is the perfect holiday gift. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German, 
Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. Uh, in addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash weird. That is babbel.com slash weird for up to 55% off your subscription. If you need to change apps for some reason, what better way than using our <laughs> custom link that is right below? Yeah. Yeah. Babbel, language for life. That's right. And this episode is sponsored by Factor. With the bustling holiday season just around the corner, it's the perfect time to plan ahead with Factor, a ready-to-eat meal delivery. They shop, prep, cook, and deliver to your door so you can enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals during the holidays, minus the hassle. Plus, with 34 meals per week, including Gourmet Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, and 36-plus weekly add-ons, you'll have plenty of nutritious, flavorful options to choose from. Well, my holidays, as everyone knows, big holiday guy, they're already jam-packed. Your, your, your calendar is, is full. I just walk through those Christmas tree sale areas just to mm. smell it. Mm. Uh, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals make it easy to fuel up fast when I'm on the go and I'm busy in the holiday season. And I also save time with the meals that are delivered because they're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Factor now, as we said, offers 34 meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what I got going on. Factor's also cheaper than dining out. Put the money you save towards holiday fun and a little bit of you time. And thanks to Factor's commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can enjoy flavorful chef-crafted meals guilt-free. Need a special occasion meal? Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easy. When things get hectic during the holidays, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week, or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor's no prep, no mess meals save me so much time on planning and cleanup, so I can fully enjoy the holidays without wasting time in the kitchen. You don't want to waste that time. Uh, not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they also help me keep on top of my goals. Uh, with <laughs> offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track. This is definitely going to come in handy for the holidays. Factor has everything that I need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats. In addition to ready-to-eat meals, they have cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized during frantic holiday times. Head to go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird60 and use code weeklyweird60 to get 60% off your first box. That is code weeklyweird60 at go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird60 to get 60% off your first box. Links are in the description below. My, uh, my next door neighbor put up all their, uh, they, I don't know if it's all, but they, they started with the Christmas decorations tonight. Yeah. It looks great. And their house is like a mirror image of mine. So I'm like, well, I can't let this stand. I just put know. a mirror up. Everyone will think that your house is covered. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. actually the lights are on my house. Actually. Or just get a really good projector. They actually, they have a projector yeah. projecting all night. Projecting a Santa Claus and like candy canes. Tell them to shut snowmen. that shit off after a while. I love Christmas, but it's <laughs> 1 a.m., please. I mean, they probably got it on a timer. Sure. Anyways, it's now time for the headlines half of the show. Uh, starting with... Uh, an incredible headline. A hero. A, hero, a true, um, uh, not American hero, a Chinese man yeah. hero. Chinese man, 50, runs a marathon in under 3.5 hours while smoking cigarettes. They said it couldn't be done. And but the, it... the photos of this are incredible because uh, not only is this man seemingly just chain smoking during a marathon, which is... How long <laughs> Absurd. is it? Marathon's 26 what? miles? Just fucking Christ. Yeah, like 26.5. Uh, not only is he smoking uh, the entire time... Um, he is, this man is jacked. This man looks like the picture of health aside from the cigarettes in his mouth. Well, look, Doctors I mean. Doctors hate him. <laughs> yeah, okay. So <laughs> the only uh, potential cure for like debilitating lung disease is literally running 100 miles a day. Yeah, then you can smoke all the cigarettes you I, want. I guess. But it, it's wild. Like he, he finished 3.5 hours is a pretty good time. Like he, he was in the, the top half of finishers, age 50. But like, you know, running that long distance running requires a lot of breathing. Like, how the fuck? Oh, imagine being behind him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sir. Please. Sir. Um, no, it just seemed like he was hanging out of his mouth and he'd take a puff every once in a while. It's doable for sure. I mean, that's, that's what it athletes... Sound, to me, sounds horrific. Yeah, it does not sound fun. Doing any physical activity after a cigarette While is the smoking, worst. smoking, yeah. Uh, I want to get clear, I don't smoke anymore. But I, I, it is not a fun experience. Yeah, uh, it's it's not ideal. But this this is kind of a throwback to like... The uh, the early days of like professional athletics where they didn't have steroids, yeah. they didn't have protein powder. Uh, they just would, the bars from some cigarettes. Yeah, like nicotine was a performance enhancing drug yeah. back then. 
They, yeah, they, I mean, they have a little bit of booze to like, you know, loosen up. Maybe it's like, uh, it's like, you know how, uh, like the, the people that die when they're like jerking off and hanging themselves. Yeah. Like this guy needs a, he needs to hit the nicotine when he's like, right when the runner's high hits. Yeah. Because it like, really like kicks it into full gear. Hmm. Um, but it, you're really not only following, but, but coming in behind this guy is just like, what am I even fucking doing? Yeah. Here? I can't beat a guy who's smoking I'm cigarettes. I'm not cut out for running. This, this 50 year old man has been chain smoking the entire time. And he's kicking my ass. Yeah. I need to find a new sport. Well, I've been shamed. Mm -hmm. They call him uh, Uncle Chen. Good. I don't know why. I don't even know if that's his real name, but that's what they're calling him on uh, Weibo. Uncle Chen. Cool. He's a hero. Police in Arizona warn against buying owls from strangers while on drugs. Sounds yeah, it's like pretty, a very specific problem. Very specific warning, but uh, I guess it was in reference. They, they pulled over a guy for uh, DUI, driving under the influence of many things. And in the passenger seat, little baby owl. Did he and, say, uh, what's that? And then the guy goes, who? I bet he did. You're free to go. Yeah, <laughs> sir. I love comedy. When Elon said comedy was back, I didn't think I'd experience it I'm like this. I'm still laughing about that sync tw uh, tweet. And now this. Uh, no, but yeah, I guess the guy, the guy was like, hi, shit. And the police are like, is that a fucking owl? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, where'd you get it? He's like, oh, I just bought it at a gas station. Someone was selling an owl. And I was like, that sounds like a good idea. I will buy that owl. So, um. I don't know. I didn't know owls were even docile enough to it, be like. It sounds like, like he's that. like in a drug addled state trying to come up with a crime that's somehow more severe than his. Yeah. That they should be enforcing. Actually, that guy was selling owls. And I believe they're a protected species. So it is it is on yeah. you to leave me right now. I'll stay here. But you got to go break up this owl dealing operation. Come on, man. Priorities. Yes. <laughs> U.S. opens antitrust probe into Ticketmaster. Amazing. Yeah, Incredible. The, the details are so far uh, pretty thin, but they're looking into it. I, and you did it, Swifties. They you did. did it. I, we were talking about it, kind of joking about it uh, last time on the episode, but they actually came through and might actually affect change. Uh, Taylor Swift sent out a response, and it was funny. I, I liked that she stood up for herself because the CEO of Ticketmaster. He blamed her. Trying to talk shit about her. He was like, well, maybe if she toured more, it, nicer than that. But like, how do you not take that as placing and the blame on the artist? I don't know if we talked about this, uh, an update to that. We, they, they, they canceled, canceled, they canceled, the, canceled yeah. the ticket sales because they're like, well, it's just too, it's too hard. No, your shit's broken <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. It is broken on purpose because it gets you more money. Yeah. It's, it's absurd. Break it's them great. up. It is so great that this is happening. And again, this is a bipartisan thing for the most part. Um, I, I figured out the reason why uh, they're not easy to bribe anymore. I was, the other day we mentioned like they're not giving them the tickets. Yeah. The, the problem is Republicans don't like entertainment anymore. Yeah, there's I nothing mean, they can go to even aside from like Kid Rock. Even the stuff you think they would like, like they they hate the NFL. Yeah, football's football's woke. Football yeah. has gone woke. The NBA too many blacks. That's what uh, they say. Yeah, hockey too Canadian. Yeah, it's a foreign sport. Um, and then uh, what's the other one? Baseball. Uh, too much Spanish. So sports are off the table, and then yeah, every movie, any musical or like uh, uh, like every movie, even the most uh, you know the the types of uh, entertainers you'd think have mass broad appeal, like Tom Hanks. They're like, uh, well, actually, did you know that Tom Hanks is a pedophile? And he drinks baby blood. And he drinks baby blood, and he uh, he if he ever steps foot in the U.S. again, he'll be arrested and sent to Guantanamo. Yeah. So I can't support Tom Hanks. No more, no Toy Story movies in my house. Also, they can't, they can't afford tickets because they've spent all their money donating to build the wall yeah. and keep Trump out of trouble and all that stuff. So it's a self-fulfilling thing. But yeah. uh, again, shout out to the Swifties who did literally what no one else yeah. potentially could have could have done over the past thirty years. Even Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam tried, and it didn't work. So this is, oh, and by the way, update. Last night, my most devious <laughs> lick. Yeah, this my most pretty fucking devious, devious lick. lick. You got in good because I checked right after that, and like you, you definitely got the best deal. Of the I day. in a venue of fifty thousand people. Yeah, uh, I sat uh, ground level, uh, like for twenty El rows back for Elton stage. John for like fifty dollars lower than face value because yeah. I bought it yesterday morning. Yeah, those tickets were going for like oh five thousand dollars when they dropped <laughs> they the sale. tickets that I got. Uh, it was like two hundred dollars, yeah. but I, it's a lot. It's a once in a lifetime thing though. But uh, um. Those tickets were $2,000 and they went on sale. 
And like, but the face value was set at like 250 or 300, yeah. but of course their system takes over. But it was just so funny because the whole time I'm like, this is my most devious lick yet. Yeah. I've really showed them. And Using, some poor uh, guy who probably spent like a grand on these tickets just took whatever he could fucking get at that point. Yeah. So I'm telling you, it works. Turn, turn that inconvenience into a win. Yeah. Coors Light's new nail polish changes color if your beer is cold enough to drink. They did that with the cans, I remember. Um, yeah, they did it with the cans. Hey, so uh, it goes through your fingers enough to where it... I, I think... You, I don't know. I think you gotta like dip your finger in Ew. the beer. Or maybe just like hold your finger up to the can. But if you're drinking Coors Light already, the can will, will tell you whether the beer is cold enough to drink. If the mountains turn blue, obviously. Because people who drink Coors are uh, too stupid to like you know, be able to feel something with their hand and know. I mean, it's, it's all uh, marketing or whatever, but like, yeah, it's trash. I mean, it's it's fine for what it is. I prefer uh, Coors Banquet, the uh, non-light version. It, uh, it's, a, it's an American uh, institution. And me, I love Coors Edge, which is what it's literally called. So you're edging on the alcohol. No, it's like straight edge. Oh, that's <laughs> this is like Coors XXX No, edge. it doesn't say <laughs> it like that, but yeah, it is. Uh, that has to be the way, like, what they're going for with it. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, the, the NA beer industry is uh, exploding. They had it at Elton John last night. That's I had fucking some Budweiser crazy. Zero. It was great. Yeah. Wow. Deer breaks into home after mistaking reindeer decoration for possible mate. <laughs> oh, my God. We got, a horny, uh, we got a horny deer who is also pissed. He got blue balls. He thought he was about to get laid, and uh, nope. But yeah, they, Red nose, blue balls. These two, these two poor fucking old people like they look like they're in their fucking 80s and this deer busts into their house and just runs around antlers knocking everything over they got holes in their ceiling at one point the deer ran upstairs for some reason they thought that was the way out deers are fucking dumb yeah they are. but uh yeah the deer was just in their house for hours while they were just like ransacking yeah it. just destroying their house merry fucking christmas yeah uh that sucks what a way i mean not oh, really. Like, way to get you into the holiday the, spirit. The deer like hurt itself too, and so the deer bleeding everywhere. Ble <laughs> it's fucking, it was bleeding all over their house. Well, hopefully they got to keep the carcass and make some jerky out of it or something. You would hope. Yeah. Um, I think they got to test it for the the norovirus or whatever. Well, once the tests come back, then yeah. it's uh, open season on that. Meat. And and uh, yeah, I want those points. I want those points? Just remember to rip the asshole out before you get started That's on anything right. else. You got to put. It. They have a tool specially designed for it. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. All right, now we can get stuck. Ah. <laughs> Let me just clean this off. Uh. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, uh. next headline. Indiana cop visits school to teach kids how to be good police. Then accidentally shoots one of them. What? <laughs> Is the child okay? This is a high school student, and apparently... It's, Still child. Yeah. So it was non-life-threatening. They didn't say where they got shot, but it's probably like the foot or the... the I don't know. <laughs> I, know but, you're, I know you're just describing this to me as a story, but I literally am picturing you as the as a uh, an officer who's listen. trying to explain it and calm so, people down. First of all, it's not a small child. It We're was talking, a high school. It was a high schooler. They, you know, they can, they can take a bullet or two. You should be a chief of police for like a small town. <laughs> you know, I, I hate the police, but I, it would be fun to be one. <laughs> I can't lie. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. Unchecked power? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sign me up. Yeah. The, you go to any, like, you go to Starbucks and you know, they're like, that'll be $2. And you're like, I don't think so. Um, uh, hmm, interesting. Interesting. This must be poisoned. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. It's, uh, so the, the, the high school aged person got shot lightly? Yeah, I guess. Um, the real question I have is why was this cop, why did they bring their service weapon? I mean, okay, yeah, sure, keep wearing it on your belt or whatever. Why was the gun ever even in a position where it could be fired? Uh, um, because I don't understand. The, it, it was, the mission, as they say, failed successfully. Because he was like, do you want to know how to be a good cop? And then he shot a child. An innocent child. Yeah, see? That's good police work. Yep, well, open and shut case. This is like that classic video, like pre-YouTube. The guy that so, shot himself in the dick almost? Uh, yeah, like the gun instructor... Who's that was in like, a school too. But was that with students? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that guy, he's like, he shoots himself and then he like tries yep. to keep it. He's like, well, that's, that's what you don't want to do. do. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've been shot. That's just a good example. And I'm uh, now I'm going to teach someone some first aid on the fly. <laughs> Wild. What we live a in a cool country. country. Yeah. yeah. Mitch McConnell votes against interracial marriage bill despite Asian wife. 
I don't try to make sense of any of this. It, it's literally they hate other people more than they want. Yeah. Uh, well, it's because the bill, this bill would have uh, codified uh, same-sex marriage and interracial marriage, both of which are currently the law of land due to Supreme Court decisions. But who so, knows? I mean, so people are like, yeah, we should probably uh, get that shit actually on the books. And um, yeah, uh, you know, it's been like seven fucking years since uh, gay marriage was legalized. And um, I thought we were past this, but um, Mitch McConnell is not. He's like, I will I will literally break up my own marriage if it means what it, hurting the gays. That's, wait, maybe that's what he wants. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh man, oh, jeez. I guess we got to get divorced. He's Shit. been searching for a way out, and like, finally, he's yeah. like, ah, f- finally. It's, uh, it's a pretty roundabout way to get a, a divorce is to make your own marriage illegal, but um, he's, he's willing to do it. It's creative. He's the master of the Senate. Yeah. Qatar slams Europe's right storm over World Cup as racism. Yeah, that's the only reason anyone is criticizing uh, Qatar for its uh, history of uh, persecution of uh, women, gay people, minorities. They they literally said gay people don't come yeah. to this fucking World Cup. And there's uh, I haven't seen the the substantial confirmations, but there seems to be already some violence happening. Uh, again, un- unsubstantiated. I saw there was a video going around on Reddit of uh, this reporter from Denmark. Like, an actual, like, war reporter who's, like, served in war zones, uh, just, like, you know, standing outside of the stadium doing a report, like, on, in the lead-up, and, like, fucking immediately, like, security guards and, like, dudes oh, in the yeah. full body thing, they're, like... Like, tell me can't film and yeah, stuff? Yeah, they're, like, threatening to break his camera, and he's, he's just, like, uh, you invited the world here. <laughs> like, uh, what, I, what... It is going to be, and I hope it's not, but it, it, it really feels like, you know, uh, not... The Tokyo Olympics were weird because of coronavirus, yeah. and they had their own problems because of that. But I think the last time we were able to just like, just sit mouth agape looking at a worldwide sporting event was Brazil's Olympics, maybe that when they is... set, they swam in the shit water. Ryan Lochte got uh, the fake beat up yeah. thing. I don't like, like this one. So the <sighs> Qatar fucked this up so badly. Like they didn't build enough hotels uh, mm-hmm. in. Where the stadium is. They so have they, temporary, like, huts. Yeah, it looks like fire the, festival. It, it looks like fucking fire festival. And then, uh, I think it was today or yesterday, they announced, like, hey, I know this is starting in, like, three days, but uh, we just decided uh, we're not going to serve any alcohol. So, uh, yeah. Like, fun. what <laughs> the fuck? Like, that is insane. You're going to have people who are... I, 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 look, I'm being honest. You are The people that fly to go to these events, those people are going to have alcohol withdrawals. I mean, yeah, the, the punter... Types the uh, yeah yeah the, the ones who are literally getting loaded on the plane and arriving there are going like the, the first the two days are going to be delirium yeah. tremens just like people are going to be like like is that some kind of like cool football chant the fifty year old British dudes who are completely bald and have a disproportionately large like stomach yeah. those guys are going to have a bad time they're going to look great when they get home though yeah yeah except for they're going to be bright red like lobsters yeah that's the British thing. people in sunlight is not great. It's like they pushed it to winter, but it's still fucking hot. It's hot. And like, (laughs) yeah, it's and and then you're sleeping in a hut. Yeah. And uh, if you if you happen to be uh, a gay person, you're running a big risk by even going to this event because they've made it clear. Yeah. But don't talk about the human rights stuff because that means you're racist. Yeah. And also, yeah, FIFA is, is just completely in collusion with that shit too. They're like, guys, 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 shh, sh- sh- no, no human, none of this human rights talk. Let's uh, let's keep politics. This up. is another thing, like the World Cup, where it's just like <laughs> thinking about how much money they've lost in the past month by the sponsorships that were involved in it is uh, kind of funny. Yeah, this is a fucking disaster. I don't know why. Like, what's even in this for Qatar at this point? Like, they've spent so much preparing for this they're not going to make any revenue off alcohol it's like, supposed to make a splash on the world stage and it's certainly working ugh. well yeah. anyway and uh final headline and we will provide uh further video uh b-roll of this because you need to see y- it. you need it but herschel walker veered off in a campaign speech to rant about werewolves killing vampires here you go Oh, do you ever watch a stupid movie late at night hoping it's going to get better, don't get better, but you keep watching it anyway? Because the other night, the other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some type of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires are some cool people, are they not? But I'm going to tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire. Did you know that? 
I never knew that, so I didn't want to be a vampire anymore. I wanted to be a werewolf. But then anyway, as I'm watching this movie, and then you can tell how stupid it is because it's one in the morning. So I'm watching my TV, uh, these kids watching their TV, a uh, vampire kill on their TV. So you know it's kind of stupid, but I'm still watching, though. As I'm watching this show, what was funny, these kids had a vampire in their attic at their house. So they were watching their TV. Now I'm watching my TV. They're watching their TV, or they see the vampire killer on their TV. So they win this contest to bring this actor. Now, y'all got to stay with me. Bring this actor who's a vampire killer from that TV to get rid of this real-life vampire in that attic. So as this actor comes to their home, he got all the right stuff. He got all the right stuff because, you know, I got to have a state and got to have a thing to, to kill him in the heart. And he got a necklace of garlic because that worked. I don't know what it does, but it worked. You got to have a cross because it burns. I know that worked. And then all of a sudden, this is what was so funny about it. As they're walking through the house... This, 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 this guy's got the holy water. He's blessing the house, this actor. Now, he's all fake. He's blessing the house with his holy water. They walked upstairs, and this vampire looking real good in this black suit. Whoa, that sounds like Senator Warnock, doesn't it? <laughs> looking all good in this black suit. Floated from the ceiling. He floated from the ceiling looking good and cool. And I'm thinking, whoa, they better get out of that house. If somebody float from your ceiling, get out of that house. That's, <laughs> that's not your house. But as he floated from the ceiling, the kid jumped behind that hero. As they jumped behind that hero, the guy jumped in front of him with this holy water, threw it on the vampire's forehead. He covered his eyes. And he took his hand away. He started laughing. And he said, that don't work. He took the cross, he put it on the vampire's forehead. And the vampire didn't even do anything. He said, that don't work. And that's the way it is in our life. It doesn't even work unless you got faith. It is time for us to have faith. We got to have faith in our fellow brother. We got to have faith in this country. We got to have faith in this in the elected officials. And right now, that's the reason I'm here. Yeah. So, uh, as far as I can tell, still, no one has managed to figure out what movie he's even fucking talking about. Hmm. Um, like this might be a movie that he only, made up in his only head. exists in his mind but yeah I, I had never actually seen a Herschel Walker speech I didn't realize he does the Trump thing of just like no script necessary I'm just going to sort of riff with the with the crowd um, but yeah that man is uh, could you know 50-50 chance he could be a senator uh, the I know, next senator I, from Georgia I know that they've like uh, clinched it even without uh, Warnock but if you're watching from Georgia, you have a chance to do the funniest thing possible right now. And that is, add one more. D. Yeah, I thought you were going to say the fun thing, funniest thing possible would be electing her. No, 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 no. <laughs> Things are funny. That would be funny, but that would be catastrophic. Uh, it would be even funnier to just see another L attached to Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. Specifically, uh, someone who is a celebrity... Uh, and has no business in political office. Yeah. Uh, so it, he is like Trump in that sense, and, and to watch him lose will be very satisfying. Well, hopefully... He can go back to doing he what he does best, getting people pregnant and then aborting those babies. Yeah, and having a very weird son who apparently doesn't uh, like him so much anymore. Would Do you think you wouldn't be weird if Herschel Walker was your dad and you were gay? Yeah, you'd be pretty messed up. Yeah, so... Yeah. Sometimes things explain themselves. I love my gay son, Christian. Does he? I don't know. Yeah. I don't uh, even think I've seen them, like, together. They just both exist as, like, political entities. But I cannot picture them the having, best, like, a father-son conversation. The best is in, like, in, like, six years or whatever, like, his son takes a run for Georgia politics. See, that would be interesting. Yeah. Christian Walker, like, that, that's the next phase of the GOP. We need, give me the gayest Republican you can find. Let's yeah. make him run. But it's going to be a grand old party for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need to update the GOP. The fabulous old party. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that's it for Weekly Reader News this week. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this week of content. We have another one coming up next week during, uh, you know, you'll be home for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, put us on the TV when your dad's asleep and then have him wake up to it angry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, though, if you have somehow missed it and um, don't mind being outdated on things because uh, this week's episodes, they all were pretty much out of date by the time they went up. But yeah, you had to be there. Uh, if you do want to watch those episodes just to be nice to us, be nice to us. Yeah. Watch those episodes, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, and we'll see you soon. Yeah, I better see 5,000 likes down At there. At least. Bare minimum. Bye.